you're checking out radindymedia.com, you will probably find all of these stories. But I like to show people who won, people who, who, who battled, who've gone into the noble battle and, and won something, won against the, the titans of greed, the titans of dickery. And this is popular resistance says uh, trailer park residents take on venture capitalists and they won. And uh, if, for those of you in other countries, I don't know if you have the term trailer park. Do you? All the other countries have that? Are there countries without, without trailer parks? I'm sure there's countries. I'm sure they're, they're poor in other countries, but in many countries, they have ways of, uh, of dealing with poor, of helping poor, of giving them a leg up, a little stepping stool so that they're not going to be uh, uh, really struggling that much. Now, and I don't want to insult trailer parks. I, some people live there, uh, not, they, they don't view it as poor. They view it as a, as a choice and in a life that they're enjoying. And, and I uh, support that as well. So I don't want to say that trailer parks are just, um, for the poor there. Uh, and, and besides the, the idea of you really want to get deep in it. You know, I talk about the different levels of reality, different layers of reality. Really, What definition of poor? Uh, now of course there's extreme poverty, which I talk a lot about trying to end that in the United States, because we are, we live in a post scarcity world. We live in a world where if the, the, the resources and the food and the water and the housing were distributed appropriately, then everybody would have everything they need. We would have, there wouldn't be a soul out there without clean water, clean food, uh, healthy food, uh, a nice roof over their head, uh, clothes that they enjoy wearing. All those things, there wouldn't be a person out there. So, I extreme poverty is one thing, but poverty, uh, some of it is, is what's the uh, who defines poverty? Like, like does everyone want to live like? Uh, why should everyone want to live like uh, a lot of the pieces of shit in suburban America? Now, there's wonderful people in suburban America uh, as well, uh, including my parents. But uh, there are some pieces of shit in suburban America that. Uh, give no care for the world around them. Give no care for the amount of waste and 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 destruction that that uh, it's incredibly wasteful life to to have you know three cars and to just uh, buy everything and throw it out after two minutes and uh, you know replace your furniture and your dog every thirty five minutes. So it can be an incredibly wasteful life, and so I, I don't support that. But I don't want to say that – I'm not trying to say that all uh, everybody in suburban America is uh, is somehow uh, wrong or evil. Hell, I may very uh, – very. Uh, I'm sure there will come a point in my life where I'm like, you know what, I'm sick of fucking metros. If I see another goddamn metro, I'm like, I just don't want to – if I – it's just another person breathing on me. Look, I like I like the idea of humanity, but I don't need the humanity on me. You know, you ever been there? You've been there where you're like, I want to help humanity, but I don't need them in my face. I don't need the, the humanity. I want to help the humanity over there. It doesn't need to be here so much. It doesn't need to be like here or here so, so much. Like I don't need to, I, w I, want, I want to help the humanity. I don't need to smell the humanity. Like could you just step back like a half foot, dude? Because I want to. Well, I think you should have a wonderful life and everything should go well for you, but can it go well for you just just like a half foot that way? So I'm not saying I won't get to the point where I uh, I, I have a, a suburban home. Um, who knows? Maybe I will. I haven't owned a car in uh, 15 years, but, you know, that day could come. I fear that day, but it could come where, uh, you know, you live in America. There's a lot of places in America where it's like impossible to get around without a car. And so you have to live in the society in which you are while you try and fix it, while you try and repair it, while you try and make it better. That's one of the lamest of all the arguments against those of us who, who criticize capitalism, who criticize this, this system uh, uh, of, of, of exploitation and destruction, global destruction, environmental destruction. Those of us who criticize it, uh, one of the lamest attacks on us is, well, don't you have a computer? You you have a phone, don't you? What? Well, how do you, you can't criticize capitalism and have a phone? You can't criticize capitalism and have a uh, 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 bike. You can't criticize capitalism and have a house. You can't criticize capitalism and wear pants because those were created by him. <laughs> it's the fucking dumbest, ignorant. Shitty-ass argument. Yeah, you know what? I 
need to exist in the world as it is now while I try and create something better. Basically, that argument is saying that no one in our world is allowed to try and create a better system or want a better system or declare a need for a better system. It's saying that if you're in this world at all, unless you're living in the woods like a fucking hobbit in a cave with barefoot, with torn off pants that you found somewhere under a dead raccoon, who knows why he had pants with him. Uh, unless you're living like that, then you have no right to criticize capitalism. And then, of course, if you were living like that and you were criticizing capitalism, then they'd go, look at that guy. You're going to listen to him? He's fucking, he's barefoot. He's got a scraggly beard living in the woods like a hobbit. Probably got those torn shorts off a dead raccoon. That's what they'd say if you actually did look like that. So it's a bullshit argument. And it's because they don't actually have good arguments to defend uh, their garbage system. So they have to go with... You can't have a computer and say those things. Anyway, back to the story here. Uh, these trailer park residents took on venture capitalism firms. Uh, the subheadline is as gentrification sweeps the West, investors are buying up mobile home parks. And this is the gravity of capitalism. This is so to get to a lower la la layer and, and uh, you know, I probably should save this for the end of the article, but to get to a lower layer, uh, I talk about the different layers of reality. The lower layer is this is the gravity of capitalism. Uh, the mobile home parks. Sorry, I'll give you more of the details in a minute, but you get the idea of the story. But mobile home parks popped up around the United States because capitalism initially had many people that were uh, harmed by capitalism that were struggling to get by and couldn't afford a regular home. And so they'd get a mobile home, which was a lot cheaper and they'd go and park it somewhere and they'd have a roof over their head. And so that popped up as a way to deal with the exploitation of capitalism. But see, capitalism doesn't stop there. It is a gravity where it just keeps exploiting and exploiting and exploiting and exploiting and shrinking everything down to its most exploited level. So now you have Capitalism now looking at those mobile home parks, which were people exploited by capitalism to begin with, looking at them and going, ah, we have a trillion dollars. We could buy up those parks and charge those people more than they're being charged and exploit them more and make it more difficult for them to live. But that doesn't matter. The end goal is just give us more money. And so at every point, that's how capitalism works. It it creates people that are struggling to get by. It then thinks, how can I exploit those who are struggling even more? Hence the gig economy. The gig economy is taking people out of designated actual like workers that could have unions and could have benefits and, and making them, uh, uh, giving them gig work where they can be fully and more, more fully exploited. Anyway, back to this article. Residents of the Colorado Park got together and bought it themselves. Durango, California, uh, on a January day at the height of ski season, uh, Alejandro Chavez pulled away from her double wide trailer, sorry, her single wide trailer on the outskirts of town and drives the two lane road south to look for a new place to live in New Mexico. Chavez dreads the prospect of making this same 1.5 hour drive back and forth every day, but she sees few options. Um, her work is in Durango, but Durango, it seems, may not may no longer have a home for her. Chavez, 30, moved to the area 18 years ago to join her parents who fled economic desolation in Mexico and found work in Durango. In 2008, the family bought their trailer in the mobile home park for $12,000. It was in rough shape, but Chavez's father, who owns a construction company, spent years and some $20,000 renovating it into a comfortable home. West Side, Chavez says, has been a good place to live, a neighborhood where Latino, Native American, and white families raise their kids together. As, in, as is common in trailer parks, however, the Chavez's and most of their neighbors own their homes, but not the land beneath them. In December 2021, they received a notice that the park was for sale. Chavez pictured their homes being torn down to make way for a hotel, a gas station, or some other amenity for ski resort goers, or their homes might simply become unaffordable. 
In recent years, an inrush of tourists, remote workers, and investors have driven land and housing prices uh, out of control in Durango and across the West. The park's prospective buyer, Harmony Communities, raised lot rents by 50% when it bought a trailer park in Golden, Colorado in 2021. So you, you get the point that venture capitalists, people with uh, uh, tons of money, hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars, say, oh, it would cost us almost nothing to buy up that place and either increase the rent by 50% and just see what happens. And uh, if, the, if the people there decide that they can't afford it and they leave, fuck them, who cares? And if enough of them leave, then we'll just build a hotel there. We don't care. We'll see how much we can exploit them before they leave. Good time. Good time had by all. Uh, because these people have so much money that they don't give a fuck. They don't. And this is if you have no regulation, nothing to stop. And regulation, for those who are a little confused as to how regulation works, regulation is like leashes, little leashes on capitalism. Capitalism is still fucked, but these little leashes make it a little bit more bearable. So if there were a regulation that uh, if, let's say, if mobile homeowners, uh, they had to vote uh, to whether to sell their, their, their mobile home lot or whatever, even if they didn't own it, they got to vote in whether to sell it to some venture capital firm. firm. That could be an example of regulation that would slow down the venture capital uh, acquiescence, annexation of these mobile parks or of whatever. And you know, it's a regulation that would do some good, but it doesn't stop the the overall umbrella of capitalism. Capitalism's gravity is always going to be towards exploitation. Just, ah, you feel you feel it. You feel it just crushing in on you. Just ah, that's how it always is, and it can take longer. Some countries have a lot more uh, leashes on. Capitalism. Some Scandinavian countries have, have have much more tethers and chains on capitalism, but it's not going to stop it. I promise you. All things being equal, nothing else happens. Nothing, you know, they don't uh, end up uh, losing their country in a war or something. All things being equal, uh, 20, 40 years from now, even the most forward-thinking, wonderful, you know, I don't know if it's Denmark or Finland or one of them. Iceland is very forward thinking as well. One of them, uh, even the best one, is going to slowly be just blah, crushed into a diamond by capitalism. It's slowly, cab the monster capitalism tears the leashes off and just because it's it's like ridiculous to be to just celebrate like hey, we had a net we have enough leashes on this fucking monster that our lives are okay. They're okay for a minute because we put so many leashes. It's like a hundred leashes, a hundred chains on that thing. And it's just like, ah, it's like a zombie that's got all the chains on it. Ah. But choosing to continue to work under it is like having the zombie in your yard. He's sitting there, just, ah, slowly the chains are, you know, getting rusty and the little links are breaking off. Ah, he gets one arm free. And at some point you got to be like, Maybe we should have him in our yard. Maybe we don't want him here anymore. Anyway, this is actually a good news story. Sorry, I turned it into a zombie tale. But this is actually a good news story that the trailer park residents got together and bought their fucking lot out from under the venture capitalists. And now they get to decide their futures. So that's something to celebrate. But of course, that does not solve the overall issue uh, of... Our, uh, our, our economic system that exploits all and always, all and always. Uh, folks, if you want to be a part of the poll I mentioned, if you want to be a part of the community that uh, stands for sustainability and, and, and a better way forward and a better world, then please go to leecamp.net. The lowest level to join up is $5 a month. So that's $1.25 a week. I am the most censored comedian in America. I've had thousands of videos banned on YouTube, which I think is the most for any comedian ever. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty positive of it. I'd be interested if anyone thinks that there's another comedian with more YouTube videos banned. So 
now, ever since that happened, ever since my show redacted tonight was deleted and everything's banned and my podcast moment of clarity was deleted from Spotify, ever since that happened, I can only keep doing what I do based on you. I, there's no, I have no corporation behind me. I have no uh, uh, sponsors, anything. It's all uh, over at LeeCamp.net, which will forward you to my locals community. And I hope you see uh, uh, a reason to join there and you like what you find there and you become a part of the community and you can post your own content there. You can uh, interact with us, interact with me. You can join in on the polls I've been posting, et cetera. You get a lot of exclusive content, exclusive Q&A. By the way, if you already remember, Q&A tomorrow, Friday, noon Eastern. I do it every Friday. Q&A just for my locals members where we chit chat about what's going on in the world. And so you can be a part of that as well. All right. If you're on Rumble right now, please click subscribe and keep fighting.